What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about, again, my favorite engine and application, but we're going to be talking about the exhaust. I think a lot of guys out there are confused about regen, what it is, what it does, why it happens, but tonight we're going to go over that so you can be more educated. We're going to go over these kind and these kind. All right guys, let's check this out. Alright guys, welcome back. I'm glad to be back with you guys talking about my favorite truck, my favorite engine, and the stuff we have to deal with that is attached to it. Now every one of our power strokes from 2008 to present all now have these emission devices on them in the exhaust called a DPF, the big curly Q of exhaust that you can see on this 650 750 application but when it's on a pickup you guys know uh, it looks like a little scud missile torpedo thingy um, and it's basically taking all of our exhaust and quote unquote regenerating it uh, I mean I guess you guys could call it like a small incinerator and it just burns off all the trapped particulates inside and converts them to friendly tailpipe emitting gases. Back in 2008 when we had the 6.4, we never had a DEF injector. It actually used a post injection pattern done by the fuel injectors and that would actually get the fire, so to speak, started in the exhaust. Well, they don't really like just dumping lots of raw fuel uh, in the exhaust. Uh, sometimes we still do. But, uh, for the most part, we are fine-tuning all that with this DEF stuff now. And when we go into regens, it wasn't uh, so much really cared about, I guess, on the 6.4, but as emission requirements changed for the 11 model year, uh, we have uh, a regen that has two faces. We have a passive regen or an active regen. And a lot of guys back in the 6-4 days would get messages, drive to clean exhaust, and we still get these messages on our trucks, but not all the time like we used to. So as we talk, I'm gonna put some, uh, some images up on here on the screen so you guys can check out and uh, follow along. But the, the passive regen, when it happens on its own, it, does not require any input from the driver other than just driving the vehicle and the exhaust temperature is going to achieve 572 degrees and it's not going to affect how the engine's going to operate but it's going to automatically clean the DPF by burning all that soot off and it occurs during normal vehicle operation and the driver doesn't need to do anything other than just drive the vehicle. Now, if you are a cab chassis truck, uh, you may see the exhaust filter cleaning message just appear on the instrument cluster. And I can remember seeing, doing some, uh, some manual regens on some ambulances that obviously are a cab chassis. For the most part, our pickups, I'm not really seeing these messages a whole hell of a lot. The other regen we have is an active regen, and it is gonna tell you to drive to clean uh, to complete a forced burnoff. Now this is when the vehicle is being operated in a manner that does not allow for sufficient passive regen. We're gonna need a little bit more power um, to clean off, off all this soot and that is and that is going to be noted by the DPF pressure sensor and it's going to tell the PCM hey we need to clean the exhaust and let's get some stuff going so this is what I was talking about that post injection so during active regen the PCM automatically activates the fuel injectors during the exhaust stroke to raise the temperature 
to begin regen and this is going to be injecting uh, some raw fuel into the exhaust just like, like I was explaining uh, to raise that temperature and a lot of guys may notice that the engine's going to sound different the exhaust is going to be tinging ticking that's totally normal that's a normal function of all of this stuff heating up and transferring through all the pipes and and the heat shields everything it's a lot of stuff going on in here and obviously you don't want to touch it because it's going to be hot but i think that that knowing how this stuff is going to work is going to help you guys understand uh, more about your truck and what you're going to exhibit while possibly doing a regen. Like, how do I know when it's in a regen? Like, when you get out and you smell that exhaust and it smells like something's burning, trust me, you're going to know it's in regen. Another key element is turning on OCR. OCR is one of my big things I like to push, whether it's with FDRS, IDS, or Forescan. You all need to have OCR turned on and it displays the percentage of how full that DPF is so you guys can properly drive the vehicle in a manner that you can complete passive regen. What happens to your fuel mileage when you go into an active regen? What's that post injection cycle doing? Exactly. So if we could keep the truck in passive regen and fine tune regen, fine tune it as we're driving, not saying beat the crap out of it, but drive it in a manner that we can keep achieving that 572 degree threshold and it is going to be totally transparent to us. We're just going to continue to drive and operate the vehicle and get to our destination. The last one that we can do, which you guys aren't going to be able to because you're, you're all not going to have a scan tool, but here at the dealer, we sometimes have to do a manual regen and it is using the scan tool to totally clean the DPF uh, outside obviously and set that ash value under the conditions that are considered clean and then we can uh, calibrate the PCM and reset all of our adaptive learn strategies so that we can start from zero because we know the filter is all nice and clean we've completed that regen and the PCM and everything is happy because as soon as it completes it's going to look back at that DPF pressure sensor and compare it to a calibrated value that the engineers over there in Ford country uh, have set and once it satisfies those thresholds then we are no longer uh, in need of a regen. You know it's important to note as well that inside inside these inside the DPF there is some non burnable ash that's going to take place and accumulate inside the DPF and this is not removed during normal regeneration you know this ash is going to come from fuels oils and other the materials that remain after the DPF regeneration process so over the life of the vehicle having this snowball effect of of compounding this non-burnable ash, we may need to replace this DPF at a period in its time. And I'm not saying take it off and remove it. I'm saying uh, replace it with an OE uh, PAR component, or sometimes you can cut it open and put it in a kiln type device and burn everything off inside and I mean everything and then they have a jig that the two pieces go back in together uh, so they can successfully weld and clock uh, those two uh, back together uh, obviously so so to talk about the pickup 550 cab chassis and below the emission system step one is going to be exhaust entering the DOC the diesel oxidation catalyst and it converts and oxidizes all these hydrocarbons from combustion and turns them into O2 and CO2 step two step two has two things two things are taking place in step two DEF is coming out of the heated tank and is injected into the exhaust which is the SCR. The SCR is the component of the exhaust which, which primarily removes NOx using the DEF. Next, step three, the remaining soot 
that goes through the exhaust is scrubbed from the exhaust stream using a DPF. Now, some of the maintenance tips that you guys probably don't know about and maybe either didn't know or but some of the things that the drivers can do is to always make sure to allow your truck to fully finish regenning. Uh, trucks like cab chassis and you know the tow trucks, all the work trucks, all these ones that are idling for long periods of time and not driven in a manner to complete passive or active regen, you're going to need to have that OCR turned on. And obviously, if you know you're going to have difficulty maintaining the DPF, you're going to have you're going to be forced to almost drive the vehicle uh, because you're going to be in limp mode and going to be forced to either drive it or take it to a repair facility to use a scan tool to clean out the filter. Every one of these trucks are going to have to have the DPFs on them, whether it's the old girls, the new girls, the sort of old girls, but there's no way around it and we're just going to have to deal with it. And I think being more knowledgeable about how the system is going to be working on the truck and all the four sensors and the knock sensors and the PM sensors and the DPF pressure sensor and this, this, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of stuff going on, and I know, guys, uh, it's kind of be can, can, it can kind of be cumbersome at times with the repairs. But I'm here to drop some knowledge. I want you guys to be successful. I want you guys to be on top with these things. And knowing's half the battle. I say it over and over. Knowing's half the battle um, because without knowing how these things are working, how are you going to fix it? And that's why we're here. I'll make sure to. I'll make sure to put in the description a link to all my exhaust videos, uh, exhaust fluid system faults, exhaust fluid warning messages, DEF faults, everything. I got them all in a playlist so you guys can go and check them out because this is the only vehicle that I care is on the road. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. If anybody's had to tackle the exhaust, such as I showed you guys, have you had DEF problems? Have you had DPF problems? You got a new one? Or you got an old one? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, sub, share. Catch you guys all next time.